Welcome to the second episode of Leonardo da Vinci's epic tale, this is Rapid Rewinds. Today we're diving into the early 1500s. Can you guess which groundbreaking projects Leonardo da Vinci was embarking on during this transformative era? Stay tuned to find out. By 1500, Leonardo, along with the mathematician Pachelli, traveled to Mantua, where he created the notable portrait in profile of Isabel d'Est, one of the leading women of the Renaissance. He then moved on to Florence, where he painted the serene and complex virgin and child with Saint Anne, further cementing his reputation as a master painter. In 1502, Leonardo's career took a new direction when he became a military engineer for Césaire Borgia, the ambitious son of Pope Alexander VI. This role took him across the Romagna region, where he inspected and designed fortifications, intertwining his artistic skills with military and engineering projects. During this time, he likely crossed paths with the political strategist Niccolò Machiavelli, by 1503, Leonardo was back in Florence, embarking on the ambitious mural The Battle of Anghiari, for the Palazzo Vecchio, a work intended to capture the dynamism and chaos of battle. That same year, Florence undertook a military engineering project to divert the Arno River as a strategic move against Pisa, a project that Leonardo and possibly Machiavelli were involved in, showcasing Leonardo's engagement with civic and military engineering. It was during this Florentine period that he painted several portraits, including the iconic La Gioconda, now known worldwide as the Mona Lisa. Measuring 21 by 31 inches, this portrait, painted around 1503 to 1506, has intrigued people for centuries, largely due to the subject's enigmatic smile. While earlier theories suggested the woman might have been Mona Lisa Gherardini, a courtesan, Modern scholars believe she was actually Lisa del Giocondo, the wife of a Florentine merchant named Francisco del Giocondo. Today, this celebrated painting, the only portrait by da Vinci from this era that still exists, is displayed in the Louvre Museum in Paris, drawing countless visitors each year. In 1504, Leonardo faced personal loss with the death of his father, Sir Piero, on July 9 an event that marked the end of an era in his personal life and may have influenced his work and outlook during this period. In 1505, Leonardo da Vinci revisited his fascination with flight, making another attempt to design a flying machine. By 1506, Leonardo's expertise was once again sought after in Milan, where he was summoned by Charles d'Amboise, the French governor. The following year, in 1507, he received the prestigious appointment as painter and engineer to Louis XII and embarked on painting a second version of The Virgin of the Rocks. It was also during this time that he met Francesco Melzi, a young assistant who would become a lifelong companion. Additionally, Leonardo returned to Florence to settle a legal dispute over his inheritance. Leonardo's journey took a new turn in 1513 when he moved to Rome taking residence in the Vatican and delving into the study of mirrors. It is believed that during this period, he may have painted the Turin self-portrait. This year also saw the rise of Leo X, Medici, to the papacy, following the Medici family's return to power in Florence the previous year. Around 1515, Leonardo painted John the Baptist, and crafted a mechanical lion for the coronation of Francis I, the new King of France. This inventive creation showcased Leonardo's genius in combining art with mechanical engineering. In 1516, Leonardo da Vinci bid farewell to Italy for the last time, lured by an attractive offer from Francis I of France. The French monarch appointed him as the premier painter and engineer and architect to the king, a position that allowed Leonardo the freedom to pursue his artistic and intellectual interests in the serene setting of the Chateau of Clou, close to Amboise in France. 
In his last years in France, Leonardo da Vinci wasn't alone, his student and future inheritor, Francesco Melzi, was with him. They lived at the Chateau of Clou, where Leonardo focused on scientific studies, planning and advising on architectural projects, and continued his work on various manuscripts. He also entertained guests with discussions on art and science and possibly continued to paint and sketch, although no significant new artworks from this period are definitively attributed to him. However, some of Leonardo's letters from this time hint at a sense of discontent, suggesting that his final years might not have been entirely contented. On May 2, 1519, Leonardo passed away at the Chateau of Clou. He was laid to rest in the Church of St. Florentine at the palace nearby. However, the turmoil of the French Revolution nearly destroyed the church, and its remnants were raised in the early 19th century, erasing any trace of Leonardo's precise burial site. His remains are believed to have been moved to the chapel of St. Hubert within the grounds of the Chateau d'Amboise, where they rest today. Leonardo da Vinci's curiosity extended well beyond the realm of art. His explorations took him through the wonders of nature, the intricacies of mechanics, the complexities of anatomy, the principles of physics, the designs of architecture, and the innovations of weaponry, leading to the conceptualization of devices like the bicycle, helicopter, submarine, and military tank long before they became realities. Sigmund Freud once described him as a man who awoke too early in the darkness, while the others were all still asleep, highlighting his visionary nature. A common thread through Leonardo's varied interests was his belief in the paramount importance of vision, asserting that Sapa Vida, or knowing how to see was essential for fully experiencing life. Leonardo's wide array of interests, however, meant that he often left many of his artworks and projects unfinished. Leonardo's notebooks, filled with intricate sketches and visionary ideas, are a testament to his genius, revealing concepts that were centuries ahead of their time. His notebooks delved into four main areas, painting, architecture, mechanics, and human anatomy. These notebooks, filled with detailed illustrations and extensive notes, some written in a unique backward mirror script, by his left hand, were difficult for others to read. Today, these notebooks, often called da Vinci's manuscripts or codices, are preserved in museums around the world, though they were dispersed after his death. Among them, the Codex Atlantica stands out, featuring designs like a 65-foot mechanical bat, a concept for a flying machine inspired by bat anatomy and the fundamentals of flight and physics. Da Vinci's notebooks also include meticulous studies on human anatomy, covering the skeleton, muscles, brain, and the systems of digestion and reproduction, offering groundbreaking insights into the human body. Despite their depth, these notebooks weren't published in the 1500s, limiting their impact on the scientific progress of the Renaissance. Leonardo da Vinci's legacy is not just in the art he created, but in the boundless curiosity and relentless pursuit of knowledge that continue to fuel the fires of invention and discovery today. This is Rapid Rewind signing off. Remember, legends never fade, they just get retold. Stay tuned for the next one.